everybody, welcome to another Galaxy Con Live where we are bringing the convention experience into your home. And today we will be joined by Team Juniper. And since this is a Q&A, I urge all of you watching right now to come up with whatever questions you may have. This is your time. Start typing them in. And I also want to remind you, there are still opportunities to purchase group chats, one-on-one -on -one chats, and autographs. So in order to do that, all you have to do is visit galaxycon.com. So I believe we are ready to get this party started. So let's bring to the stream first. He is the voice of Jean Arc, the one and only Miles Luna. Hello. Hi, how you doing, Miles? I'm doing good. I'm excited to be here. Well, we are so thrilled to have you. All right, introducing next, she is the voice of Nora Valkyrie. Welcome the one and only Samantha Ireland. Hi! How's it going, Samantha? Doing well, thank you so much. Thank you so much. All right, introducing next, she is the voice of Piranicos, the one and only Jen Brown. Hi! Yay! How's it going, Jen? Oh, it's so good. Uh much happier now that I get to do another one of these panels and have some sort of human interaction. Yes, exactly. <laughs> are great for that. All right. Up next, he is the voice of Lyren. He is Neith Ohm. Hey, good morning. How's it going on the other side of the world? <laughs> uh, still a little bit foggy this morning, but uh, know, <laughs> as good as can be. <laughs> Thank you. Awesome. <laughs> and rounding out our panel, we actually have the voice of Professor Ospin. He is Shannon McCormick. Hey, what's up? Hey. <laughs> Yay! How you doing, Shannon? I'm doing fantastic. Thank you. Very cool. All right, so I've already been informed that we already have a whole bunch of questions from the fans. So I'm actually going to ask a couple questions first, and then we're going to get to those fan questions. So, all right. My first question for you guys. If your character from Ruby were to compete on a reality TV show, what show would that be and would they win? Oh, man. Oh, wow. Sam? <laughs> Sam's, Sam's like ready to go. Ready. Because I think it's a funny one. Naked and afraid. Um, <laughs> and she would win. <laughs> Easily. <laughs> What about you, Jen? <laughs> oh, that's okay. I'll tell you. I'll tell you which one. And part of it is because, it, like Sam, it would be fun. Um, and it's going to be completely opposite of what anybody would think I would say because, you know, fear is like super strong and fast and, you know, warrior. You know, you could maybe American Ninja, but like, no, 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 no. <laughs> No, no, no. And mainly because I, mean, I just found out about this show. Um, but it's, oh crap, what is it called? The whole, uh, Holy Moly. What is that? Yeah. Yeah, what is what? that? Holy it's a putt putt golf competition show that is like on acid. It's so weird. <laughs> it's so insane. All the people like, come up with like code names for themselves and wear like weird costumes or fun uh, outfits. And then the hosts uh, are like old school seventies commentator, like pretending to be, but Rob Riggles just makes like nothing but like the stupidest, funniest jokes the entire time. And the courses are like designed like out of like really Wonka. Like there, there's, there's one where literally one of the holes, they make people wear a suit of armor and then dragons breathe fire on them. I kind of want to watch this what? show. Oh, you need to. I had never heard of it. It's um, like, holy moly. It's hilarious. It's supposed to be funny. But all the like people competing in the putt-putt uh, thing are like really nice to each other. <laughs> like, the people competing are like really nice, but then it's just this, you know, like someone's trying to run through a windmill and then gets whacked into water. And, like there's the obstacle course. Like yeah, like climb on wieners to get to the next hole. Like there's like this whole like barbecue one. It's so weird. It's so weird a show. And I just think it'd be fun to see Pierre. <laughs> and she is good at stuff, but of course she'd be good at miniature golf. Yeah, That's very true. true. <laughs> what about you, Miles? 
I think um, my uh, I think probably some some variation of like the talent shows like America's Got Talent or something, and he'd bring like his best card trick. And it would just result in crickets. But, like, his mom would tell him that she's really proud of him. So, like, he'd come away from it feeling okay about it. <laughs> like, all of all of his friends, like, all of Team Juniper and Team Ruby's in the front row, like, just keep going. Just keep going. You're great. You're doing great. Don't worry that the ace is in row two. <laughs> That's awesome. What about you, Neith? Uh, I'd have to go with John, uh, John, why do I call him John? I'd have to go with Miles, um, when you said, uh, America's, America's Got Talent or something, because <laughs> Ren is the dancer of the group, so, uh, and heck, why not just bring up the whole team, and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> like a little, we'll have so like a, we'll have a yeah. dance off. Would be perfect. Yeah. For, yeah, for <laughs> and Shannon? So, I, I mean, um, Ozpin on his own would maybe want to do Top Chef, um, but but actually I think what he would be best at is he would be on Survivor because even if you were eliminated, he would okay, come back. <laughs> so he it's would. It's a long game. I like I like I like the idea of him being on some sort of like trivia or quiz show because of this yeah. just immortal man that knows everything. Like he was there for half of the historical questions. He met every single person in trivia question. Yeah, yeah, he's just like bored. Like, yes, it was 1492. Final answer. Please continue. Next one. Alex Trebek would hate you. <laughs> <laughs> or actually, probably love you because he gets really excited when people get big. Big like you know amounts of money and like, a yeah. lot of questions. Wait, take that back. Wait, take that back. We're on the table. I can see Ren on Top Chef too. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. Wearing his apron. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Oh. Cut that. Oh. Norris in the audience cheering him on. Uh, uh, the the God, gosh darn it. Um, my brain just nailed it. Nailed it. I was just gonna say you're talking <laughs> about it. Oh yeah. 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 I don't know nailed it that well. You yeah, but you should. And you should watch you it. Should. it. <laughs> it's so funny. It's so, so good. Funny. It's just a bunch of adults that can't bake trying to make really, really, really like impressive, like oh. bake food, really, like the super complicated cakes, except they're done by people who are terrible at it. And so that's the whole point. <laughs> I should be on that show. Yeah. Like, it's oh, amazing. Yeah. Look at it. She'd be eating everything. I'd be horrible at everything. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'll ask one more before we get to the fan questions. So how about if you, as yourself, not as your characters, had the ability to visit any fictional land outside of Remnant, let's say, where would you guys like to visit? Miles, okay. you look like you got something to say. Yeah, oh my God. Are you guys familiar with Kirby's Dreamland? No. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So Kirby's Dreamland is pretty much the mo with the exception of the protagonist of the game Kirby. Everything in Kirby's Dreamland is super chill. People it just hang out all day. They eat cakes. Like mm -hmm. everything's cute, e except for Kirby, who goes around as the hero saving the day by like consuming everyone and then like stealing their powers. Like Kirby's <laughs> honestly the scariest thing in Kirby's Dreamland. If I can just steer clear of that little gumball, like. I feel like I'm good and can just kick it, but I don't know. That's just me. Um, wait, is Kirby the big puffy pink thing? Yes. yes. Oh, I think I, have I know what Kirby is. Now. I yeah, have that a... seems terrifying though with Kirby. <laughs> I would do Red Dead Redemption. That's like mm. the I would like to be in that world. I have not personally played the video game myself. I have watched people play the video game, but I love a survival. Uh, scenarios and I just don't really like the zombie ones as much but I like kind of like the old western kind of feel I like those and I just like I didn't didn't Red Dead Redemption do a zombie like download or something yeah there was a DLC expansion Undead Nightmare that was like completely out of left field and cool yeah. in its own right I remember my husband like down and he was like this is wild <laughs> so was I so watched cool. that but that would be something that, that Samantha Ireland would like to do for sure awesome what about you, Shannon? Um, I would pro to go visit. I would probably go with the land of Ooh from Adventure Time. 
I somehow knew you were going to say that. Oh, really? Yes. <laughs> yeah, I just I love I love like how just like how bonkers everything uh there is. Um and uh yeah, I think the whole the whole adventure time world is pretty amazing. Awesome. What about you, Neith? Uh when you asked a whole slew of fantasy worlds came to mind, but then I think about it a little bit. I'm, I'm like, wait a minute. If I enter those worlds, there's going to be tons and tons of things trying to kill me every single day. <laughs> like, I mean, think of like Azeroth from World of Warcraft, and then Hyrule from Legend of Zelda. I'm like, wait, there are monsters everywhere. <laughs> and then you can't go outside your own door without something trying to kill you. So, um, uh, but maybe the Mushroom Kingdom from uh, Mario. <laughs> No. The, most, the most dangerous thing you got there is probably like a fire flower, maybe. Yeah, no, not a fire flower. <laughs> um, what, what are those those plants that's that fireballs? Oh, piranha plants. Piranha plants. Yes, <laughs> that's, the, that's the most dangerous thing I can think about at the moment. <laughs> besides the the mush uh, the, the the koopas. <laughs> so. Yeah, I feel like you could sidestep a turtle or two. I think. Yeah, <laughs> very <laughs> very unimpressive. Yeah. Awesome. And what about you, Jen? I'm curious. Uh, well, I'm I'm definitely going to go the cartoon route, like Shannon. Except I'm going to say Beach City because Steven Universe is my favorite. Oh, that's a good <laughs> like, one. Not only do you get to meet all the really cool people in Beach City, you also get to meet the Crystal Gems. So it's like best of both worlds. Chaotic world ending things only happen every once in a while. If you pick your particular point in time that you go visit, you mostly just to get to see a bunch of really cool aliens fight each other, and everything ends up being okay. Awesome. All right. So right now we're going to be taking some questions from the fans. So let's bring up the very first fan question. This is from, I believe it's pronounced Tanaka Rose. And this is for all of you. What is something you and your character have in common? Something like hobbies or maybe your upbringing? Uh, I mean, John and I, in our adolescent years, were definitely a bunch of tryhards with good intentions that just fell on their face all the time. <laughs> um, so there's that. Uh, I also feel like I like I think John likes playing games, uh, board games, video games, um, and I think I think he and I could have like some fun co-op couch gaming sessions together. I feel like he'd find what that pretty chill. Play? What's that? What game would you play? Oh my gosh. Uh, I think maybe a little bit. I could see you dabble in, a, in like a Mario Party esque scenario. Um, I don't. Something about Jean, he does not strike me as like a first person shooter kind of guy. Like that, he'd just be like, why is this 14 year old insulting my mother? We're playing a game. Like, <laughs> that's how that would go if he logged on to Call of Duty or something. <laughs> Mario Party sounds like a blast. All right. Anyone else? I like to pump some iron. We both do. <laughs> Me and Nora. <laughs> I like working out a lot. And so does she. So that's our hobby that she we have. She would be such a good workout buddy. Oh my God. Yeah, she's She'd be so motivating. I mean, <laughs> she could break you over her thigh easily. Um, and <laughs> I, I, like, I, super want be, I want to be like that. So, you know, that's the super encouraging she'd just be there to like make you like yeah. try your best yeah but she i think she'd also be kind of mean which i like oh so. yeah but like positive mean but like in a really peppy way yeah, yeah like yeah. come on put your back into it anyway. and then you yeah. do it and she'd be like see i told you like <laughs> <laughs> ozpin i drink way too much coffee <laughs> <laughs> Y'all would just have like a like a map of all the best coffee spots around town. Yeah, exactly. Jen, uh, oh, we both say sorry entirely too frequently. <laughs> <laughs> entirely too frequently, but it's 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 cute. We say it when we don't need to. Awesome. I definitely have that problem. Well, I've gotten better about it, but. Growing up when I was your age, yeah, yeah. And me? Oh, um, I have to say that Ren's the quiet one out of the team, so I guess I could relate to him in that way. And he's he's not a bad cook, so uh, and I do some of the cooking around my house uh, half the time, like. And um, so Samantha, if you ever want some pancakes, oh yeah, uh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> 
Go. I can help you that one. <laughs> What's your favorite thing to cook? Hmm? Oh, uh, it's, uh, well, it's, uh, my mom taught me how to make egg rolls, so the Cambodian style. So therefore, if you want, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I'm in. All right, that was a great first question. Here's our next one. This is from Willow Blue Eyes. Do you guys ever, or would you ever cosplay? And who would you cosplay as? Who um, wants to start with this one? When, well, uh, I, oh, I have. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I, I cosplay as Kira last year uh, for Dragon Con and for uh, Supernova. And I did, I did in-person photo ops. I was going to do it more this year, obviously. <laughs> wow, wow. <laughs> and then we were all actually thinking about trying to do it this year yeah. uh, as Queen Juniper um, before everything. Yeah. Before the dark well, times. Yeah. <laughs> it's on next year or hopefully later this year, sooner yeah. rather than later. You know, I mean, well, eventually, yeah, you know, when it's safe. Yeah. 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 Yes. For Actually, sure. We got to stay optimistic. All right. Neith, what about you? I have never cosplayed and. Uh, I was hoping to uh, during the convention scene, but since the Corona thing came up, but um, let's see. Who would you Well, as? yeah. Well, Genji, I think from Overwatch was oh, extremely, I, nice. I find myself yelling like, <laughs> I'm like, wait a minute. Uh, I'm like, my wife has been kind of angry. It's like, dude, quiet down. <laughs> Maybe sleeping. Well, I look so. forward to seeing that. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, definitely. It would be cool. Shannon? Uh, I have not uh, cosplayed, although I threatened, uh, not threatened, but I did say if somebody was willing to make me the dress, that I would go as Admiral Holdo from uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the Last Jedi. Love oh, that. wow. It wasn't because I am a huge Laura Dern fan. Uh, and uh, I was like, OK, if somebody can you know, rock me this kind of like pink sherbet colored uh, dress, I would go as Admiral Holdo, but nobody, nobody did it for me, so. Yet. But, but now yeah, it's out yeah. there. I'm, I'm willing to put it out All there. right, if any fans out there know. <laughs> yeah. Just put, put your dimensions out on Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. So, who wants to answer? Samantha? Um, well, I'm going to hop on the Star Wars Princess Leia for sure. She'd be like, oh, you'd hands down. Wait a minute! Did you, didn't your whole family do a, a a Star Wars thing for Halloween one year? Um, no, we, we my son loves to change his mind so often. I have to give him like a, I say this is the last day to change your mind, I, so we can all dress together. I, um, I have an image in my head of you dressed as Princess Leia, and I thought it was from the Halloween photo. I, no, I, I, we haven't done Star Wars yet. yet. I wish I want. I, I push it every year, and my son's like, yeah. And then all of a sudden, like we're Ghostbusters. So like you know, <laughs> we're Ghostbusters two years ago, and this. What were we this past year? Oh, we were Marvel superheroes, which was like, uh, no, no offense. I didn't like it. Um, Black Widow? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this that, yeah. Yeah. We were supposed to do um, the Guardians of the Galaxy. And I told my husband that I found this really cool um, leather jacket that I could be Star Lord. And my husband was like, no, I'm Star-Lord. I'm like, well, I'm a Star-Lord. <laughs> I'm like, no one can like, like, let go of their pride. So my sweet child was like, we're just going to go with the Avengers. So. I mean, that's a very Star-Lord thing to do, is both of you arguing over who should be Star-Lord. There should have just been two Star-Lords. <laughs> but yeah, so that's where we were. So yeah, we like to do a group every year but i i want to be princess leia so badly i just haven't had my chance so one day awesome and miles when um when into the spider verse came out and cemented Ooh. itself as my favorite movie of all time um my heart was filled with joy at the fact that i could finally cosplay as peter parker and my gut would actually be canonical. Um, I did a, I did, I was so excited. I did Peter B. Parker at uh, New York Comic Con. I had the mismatched shoes. I, I like had the most comfy, 
uh, 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 like jogger pants. Uh, I got to just let my neck beard go. It was great. It was honestly like I, I got pizza on the way to the convention to be in character and not because yeah. I have a problem. Uh, it was a really good time. It was a lot of fun. Very cool. I That's love awesome. that. And that is a fantastic film. You are mm, spot on. Oh, yeah. right. I love that. Yeah. Movie. It's amazing. It really is. All right. Here is the next question. Okay. Uh, this is from Kaze. This is for all of you. If you could pick a fairy tale or a mythological character that is not in the show yet, who would you pick? This is tough because we're in the middle of writing volume nine right now. And I, I feel like I, I don't know if I can... I need some time to think because there's a okay, lot of okay, things we'll happening Okay, okay, we'll come back to you. I've backed away really hard. <laughs> so, I, my two favorite, uh, my two favorite, uh, like myths. One's a myth, one's a fairy tale. Neither of which would be um, in the show. It doesn't make sense in the show. I love Rumpelstiltskin. That is a, such an amazing fairy tale to me, just because of like him ripping himself in half at the end and, you know, making people guess his name. It's amazing. Um, I guess I have a thing about people being ripped in half because my favorite myth is the myth of Acteon, which is the hunter who sees uh, Diana uh, bathing and uh, she gets really PO'd at him and then uh, turns him into a stag that his dogs rip apart. Um, so his own, his own, his own dog needs to uh, that's my that's my favorite mythological story. I don't know what it is about it, but I really love it. All right. <laughs> not, sure that really, that not quite rude in front of you. Oh. Oh. Okay. Oh, sorry. Neith, go. Here, here. go. Oh, okay. Uh, I was thinking. Well, we already have Thor inside the the Ruby verse, so we need Thor's other half. We need Loki inside <laughs> the Ruby. <laughs> So we gotta get a, a gender bended Loki into the story. Yeah, Ooh, I like that. That is like way yeah. too good of an idea. Holy yeah. shit! <laughs> <laughs> shit! <laughs> All right, I call gotta, Carrie. We need to make ready. changes. That idea is Loki. too much ass. <laughs> it's like, uh, gotta rewrite volume nine. <laughs> Writing credit for you, Neith. All right. Yeah, All right. What were you gonna say, Miles? Uh, okay, I I feel confident in saying this one because I don't think it will ever end up in the show. I would love to see this like super jacked, huge faunus with these floppy red dog ears. Uh, Clifford the big red dog should 100% oh. be a Ruby character, just like an absolute like brick house of just like <laughs> meat that loves to just bring you the morning newspaper and wants to be your friend. <laughs> That's adorable. Oh. Yeah. Cliff, but it'll be spelled with like a Y. <laughs> There we go. Ruby fan artists, get on that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The big red dog gram. That's pretty amazing. <laughs> what do you think, uh, I, I know mine. Um, I, well, just because ever since I was younger, I've always been obsessed with Persephone. I loved the Persephone uh, myth growing up. And just, I freaking loved it so, so, so hardcore. Um, so I think it'd be amazing to see uh, a Persephone-based character that was like uh, gender fluid and also like kind of, you know, played both teams as far as grim and uh, uh, mm. feminine. And so it'd be really cool to have a character like that. That's what I would do. I, I somehow always like gravitated her, towards her as well, but I don't remember why I gravitate towards her because I was going to say it, but I was like, there's nothing to back it up because I can't remember her story. Um, oh, you remember with the pomegranate? I, I just always liked her. I remember hearing her story and like, oh, I love Persephone. And then I, now I just can't remember it though. So I don't know why it's, I still love it's, her. It's incredibly tragic. Yeah, that's, I know, that's why I'm really, really sad. <laughs> And borderline, uh, by borderline, I mean completely problematic. Okay. But, <laughs> oh, yeah. but, but, um, no, she has to spend, uh, she's basically kidnapped right. by the hell and has to spend half of the year, uh, underground and the other half of the year. And it's probably a seasons kind of deal because when she's, um, when she's down in hell, her mother like weeps for her, and so gets pulled and like sad and stuff. So it's it's just a it's a beautiful allegory, but it's a very very problematic yeah, story. I forget what happens when she ends up in the underworld. Does is it something about her lover or something, or is it okay. he, he loves her? Like yeah, 
Yeah, he takes her. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. She eats, while she's down there, she eats like six seeds of a pomegranate and yeah. yeah. the six months that she has to spend underground. Yeah. Oh, wild. Yeah. The, I, I don't know why I don't remember her story, but like I always, I don't know. I loved her for some reason. I, I say I'm a huge Persephone fan as well. So cool. Awesome. All right. Uh, before we get to the next question, just a reminder that you guys can visit galaxycon.com to purchase group chats, one on one chats. And autographs so make sure you guys you know go visit all right let's get to this next question this is from save the bees okay so who in your character get to spend one day together what would you do Ooh. oh okay. who wants to go first uh Neith? Neith, you want to go first okay sure um okay. <laughs> well ren is the sleepy one and um I'm currently very sleepless because of my six month old baby. So <laughs> I think we would just spend the entire day napping. <laughs> like, <laughs> as boring as that is, but yeah. What a dream. He needs to sleep. I uh, He wants to sleep. I need to sleep. So. Awesome. Uh, who wants to go? Samantha? We would do some storm chasing after we do uh, a couple rounds in the gym. Um, so that's what we would do. We would follow the lightning strikes to see what would happen because that'd be fun. So awesome. Jen? Uh I would say oh, I know. <laughs> we would we'd go to an arcade and we'd play pinball machines because she could help me highly win. <laughs> Cheat the system. She'd help me keep <laughs> <laughs> I can see you like that sounds like an after school special of you like trying to convince sweet old Pira into cheating in a game like oh I don't know it's like come on Pira aren't we friends <laughs> <laughs> well it's not really cheating it would just be like you know if the ball was like unfairly hit when it shouldn't have been and go straight down the middle she could just that's it just oh, kind of little thing but super unfair and rude where your flippers can't even get to it that's it it's like, like fair cheating. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like it's like uh, cheating at a carnival game. You yeah. know, we're just <laughs> evening the, the playing field here. Yeah. 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 Right, right. I, that's so cute. <laughs> what about you, Miles? I don't know why. I just want to take that boy to the beach. <laughs> I like like how when you take your dog to the beach <laughs> and like they just have a blast. I feel like it would be similar. I'd be like, yo, dude, like. We'll bring an ice chest with like watermelon stuff. He'll be like, watermelon? Oh, yeah. yeah. Like, I don't know why. I think like, you know, building a mean sandcastle. Oh, like my right. God. We would build the dopest sandcastle. <laughs> oh, it would be so good. We would try to skimboard and hurt ourselves and then resign ourselves to like burying each other in the sand. <laughs> and then Tide would come in. And that would be an issue. And we would need help. <laughs> Awesome. Shannon? Uh, I think uh, we would pr I'd probably take advantage of the aforementioned uh, map of all the good coffee spots in town and just like, okay. yeah, just like you know, talk, talk, you know, contemporary events and uh, whatever is going on with my man Ozpin in a coffee shop. And then we maybe go to another one. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> coffee talk. All right. Coffee Here's talk. the next Here's one. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the next question. Uh, this is from Ricky. So this is for all of you. What are some of the things that you've learned or done so far while at home? Ooh. I want to start. Samantha, you want to start us off? Um, I've been doing a lot more projects around the house. I've been doing a lot more landscaping and gardening. And um, we've just been, basically, uh, my mom said I should start a blog because I've been just looking at projects and can we curse and um, and say F it um, because I'm like F it. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just gonna do it. And so I have been doing a lot of F it, whatever. Um, so kind of anything I'm interested in, I've been delving into and trying to get better at it. Like I built a patio in the backyard and um, you know just random stuff to make it our home like much more nicer to be at. But um, right now we're trying to figure out how to become like. RV life people, like half at home and half on the road with our family. So that's the next thing I'm, I'm delving into. 
So that's I love it. it. Yeah, yeah. We'll see. Probably won't happen, but it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> but it might. But it might. It might. It might. Yeah. So. <laughs> what do you think, Jen? Uh, I've, I've also been doing some of what Sam's been doing as far as like gardening stuff. Uh, I've been getting our backyard put together. We we had to move right at the beginning of quarantine. So <laughs> um, lots of like nesting, getting the house together, making the porch look nice. You know, I just have some really cute rainbow rattan ball, like porch light. Getting very excited about doormats and, and, and curtains. Oh, I built, I built the sound booth finally. Um, and I just finished that up today. I, uh, most, I mean, most, most of it's been I'm producing, executive producing a show yeah. that I, that I pitched, uh, that I'm, I, I'm literally doing like 20 jobs. So my, the past three months has been like, okay, uh, let's art design your entire home and backyard. <laughs> <laughs> so I've been like building videotape lights and creating, you know, doing these weird, I've just been, uh, creating weird doors in my backyard, like a whole wonderland, a graveyard. Like it's been insane. I've just been crafting like crazy, but for the purpose of like helping make the show and taught myself Premiere Pro. I've been editing, but on a really easy program. So now I'm using the, the real deal. And yeah, it's, it's been, it's felt really good uh, to have a, a reason to really focus on all these projects. Uh, because they, you know, I get to show something off. I'm not allowed to say what yet, but I do have a television show that'll be coming out in the next like month or two. That's awesome! Congratulations, and we're super excited when we finally can know what the project is. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait. Shannon, what about you? Um, I've been doing a lot of writing um, and working on. Uh, uh, my own business over here. I've kept a, I've actually kept a little plague journal since April, like that I've written in every day. So I've got like a diary of all of the events of this uh, ridiculous uh, situation that we're all in. Um, and that's, that's basically it. Every day is kind of just exactly like the one before and the one that will come after. Groundhog day. <laughs> <laughs> Very groundhog day. I've only watched a lot of television. <laughs> what about you, Nee? Uh, this goes back to the thing that Brent and I share. Uh, I've learned how to make a raspberry uh, Oreo cookie cheesecake. I've also learned how to make a lemon cake with cream cheese frosting. And the list goes on and on and on. <laughs> So, um, oh. I want you to live yeah. in my house, <laughs> <laughs> and I would love to bake some something for you if you want. So, Yum. that's awesome. Yeah. And Miles, um, a lot of gardening, a lot of cooking. I think probably the most, um, uh, the one that I've gotten the most out of though is I started reading this book called The Artist's Way. Um, it was like published in 1990, so it's like a bit dated, but it's sort of like this book, um, that is. Um, designed to kind of help you really chase that like inner creative child uh, and and essentially like if you're a creative and maybe you're feeling like blocked or just kind of want like something to freshen things up or if you've never done like anything artistic before but maybe you've always wanted to it's it's kind of a book for that and um, every week like you know there's readings and then there's some exercises at the end of every week and sometimes the reading's a bit stuffy but i found all the exercises to be really lovely and some of them are really strange like hey if you go on a walk like try and five like find five cool rocks or like try to bake something this week or like do try if do your best to set aside one hour to just do something for you and that's your time um and because of that uh i it kind of led me to start looking into learning more about writing for video games um, video games have always been really, really interesting to me as like this new storytelling medium. And so uh, I officially signed up for a class, um, like a six-week class being taught by a, a, a professor from the University of Texas. Uh, and I'm doing that uh, in my evenings sometimes. So that's been like my the big thing, I think. Um, that and then just, yeah, trying to not think about the fact that every day just feels like the day that came before. Yeah. That's definitely like top priority is just learning how to like cope with that. Yeah. 
It's August. Like, wasn't it March? Like yesterday? Today? <laughs> hey, do y'all remember Tiger King part of quarantine? You guys remember Tiger yes. King quarantine a thousand years ago? Yeah. You know, I was going to say, forever ago. Oh my so God. Yeah. No, I would oh. say like, um, having children has, has made this time like so incredibly hard, but like oh really fulfilling because they don't make every day the same as the day before. Mm, oh. In good ways and bad ways, but like, I, I don't think I'll, you know, I've really just soaked in my kids and not had to think about anything outside of work that gave me so much anxiety. And now if I'm given opportunity with work, I, I look at it with like, with happiness rather than like, <sighs> or like, or self doubt. Now it's just like, that's a great opportunity to play. That's a great opportunity to just have fun. And so this has been like, with having children, we haven't had a break. My husband and I have been parents every single day of every hour of every day, but it's been really, really fulfilling. So yeah. I will say that, that helps with the whole groundhog thing to be for us, for me personally. I don't know about for my husband, I don't know, but for me. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. All right. We got time for a few more questions. So let's get this next one rolling. This one is from Thea Epley. And this is for all of you. If you could have any ruby power or weapon in real life, what would it be? Oh, I'm going to answer this because I know which one it is for sure. Oh, hi. Uh, and I also need to take a break real quick. Um, but so I'll answer first. Velvet. You get every, you get it all. You get oh, all. Good well, answer. Yeah. <laughs> Once, I mean, case closed, done and done. In my opinion, the best, the best weapon, hands down. Do um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, can't, I mean, I there's no, I don't have to say anything else. All right, very fair. How about you, Miles? Um, sorry, Shannon, but I do want to take Ozpin's cane, um, mainly just because uh, you already have. So <laughs> <laughs> mainly just because um, I can't see any practical use for a, a like combat sniper scythe hybrid in like our world that would like <laughs> like I'd be like cool I have Ruby's weapon and then like the police would arrive like <laughs> like <laughs> that's how I see that going. Um, but Ozpin's cane, I think it's, uh, it's, uh, it looks cool. It looks sleek and, um, it's got a few secrets still. So that could be, I think that could be a cool weapon. Oh man. Uh, oh man. All right. That so sounds like a teaser. <laughs> oh. I know. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Who from me? <laughs> Never <laughs> Shannon. <laughs> Spoiler alert. All right. Samantha, what about you? Oh, I would just want to. Nora's. <laughs> I just love it. I love it. I love everything about that woman so much. But I would definitely use her weapon. I think, and I also think it's the best one. Well, you know what? Good. Who is it? Coco that has the purse with the revolver. Yeah, <laughs> the mini gun purse. <laughs> Machine gun, right? That also might be actually very trendy in this time. Um, so I don't know. Um, but it's definitely Nora's. For sure. Awesome. Me? I don't know if this counts as a power, but the, does Nora's ability to jump to other worlds after drinking a cup of coffee, does that count? Let's see where the chibi <laughs> counts. Let's go with that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> because, you know, if I ever decided I wanted to go to another universe, I just have to drink a cup of coffee. And, uh, <laughs> I love that episode so much. <laughs> that was such yeah. fun. Yeah, lovely. Shannon? Uh, Boy, I don't know. I'm I'm thinking like just rocking some silver eyes would be the way to go. Ooh. You know, just you know, just wreck, just wreck stuff. It's it's <laughs> also just like a very sleek look. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh. Cool. And then you know, and then you're like, and also check it out, Blazant. Blah, 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 blah. Oh. Welcome back. <laughs> hey. <laughs> <laughs> and just in time for the next question. So here okay. we go. This is from Ash. What do you think is your character's biggest flaw? <sighs> we got a chair spin. Oh boy. Okay. Uh, I'm just gonna uh, answer it because I think I think it's going to be answered. Um, so I'm not answering this one. Okay. That's probably a good Very call. fair. 
Um, I mean, John's got a lot. I think John um, has a deep. I think it's changed, and well, it has changed if we're doing our job right. But uh, at least at the beginning of the series, John has a, a deeply flawed idea of what a hero is supposed to be. That a hero is supposed to be the person on the front lines doing everything themselves and getting all the glory. And that ain't it, folks. Um, and I think that led to a lot of mistakes. Um, uh, that I think he's learned from a lot of them uh, through the help of a lot of his teammates and friends and stuff. All right, Shannon. Um, Ozpin's uh, biggest flaw is he is uh, he is a he's a whiny little baby who you know, he doesn't when people are mad at him he goes off and he sulks inside the mind of an adolescent. <laughs> <laughs> it's like he, you're immortal and and also just a little crybaby pissant and it's <laughs> oh, come on man roasted. Oh, what? I said roasted. Roasted. <laughs> Roast my own character. <laughs> <laughs> you, you baby. <laughs> what about you, Neith? Uh, I'm kind of afraid to answer because I might bring some spoilers out. Um, I'm going to have to say, you get, you're going to have to wait until volume eight comes Probably to see. Call. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And Jen? Uh, you know, probably being dead. I'll say, I'll say, uh, being a little naive because that's what got her into the position that she is, which is dead. <laughs> <laughs> Um, she was just young and naive and she believed uh, <laughs> a certain person uh, had her best interest at heart and <laughs> he didn't. So, <laughs> bum, bum, bum. Yeah, looking at you, Mr. Austin. Well, I'm looking at Miles who wrote the damn thing. So. <laughs> hey, co-wrote, thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, Miles was like, I share the blame, okay? I'm, not <laughs> I'm only half at all. <laughs> <laughs> I'm partly responsible, but partly. <laughs> I do like I do like your initial character evaluation form, though, Jen. In in room for improvement, you just have written could be alive, could be a little more alive. <laughs> All right, so we have a couple minutes left, so I think we have time for one more question, yeah. and. This question comes from Loki Mischief, and this is for all of you. If your characters had any words of encouragement during this uh, trying time, what do you think they would be? Mm. Man, these have all been really good questions. Mm -hmm. They really have. Oh. These have been fantastic. Samantha, do you want to start? Uh, keep moving forward, yeah. <laughs> oh, you just stole my... <laughs> I, mean, it's all I was going to say that. I don't Classic know. Ren and Nora. <laughs> yeah, like... um, I think Jean would say something to the effect of, um, <clears throat> look, sometimes the hard times feel like they're going to last forever. Like in middle school. But eventually, <laughs> middle school's over. And Matt, the guy that picked on you for being fat, he gets fat. So guess what? <laughs> Sometimes it changes up. You just got to be patient and and keep your head in the game. And don't <laughs> think about all those times Matt was a jerk. <laughs> well said. Thank you. Well said. <laughs> Jen? Uh, let's see. Well, here. Let's ask her. <laughs> do, you any, uh, do you have any words of encouragement? For, for everybody uh, dealing with the, the quarantine right now? <laughs> yes, I would say stay positive, mm -hmm. distract yourself with things that bring you joy, and remember that during times of darkness, it usually means we're battling for the right side. Oh, that's lovely. Oh, wow, that is that. really poignant. <laughs> Beautiful. All right, Neith, what about no, you? About, I'm having a very sad, serious case of block, uh, writer's block at the moment. I can't think of anything. <laughs> <laughs> After uh, Shari said, keep moving forward. So I was kind of like, oh, wow, what, what's left? <laughs> like, you can say ditto to that. 
Yeah. Oh, dinner's okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Continue advancing in a positive direction. <laughs> um, I mean, I think Anupin would say something about um, uh, he would say something about working together as a team, but probably phrased in such a way that it was way more complicated and uh, than mm-hmm. and also would make you think that he was trying to trick you. <laughs> um, or he would say something to try to trick you and it would seem completely earnest <laughs> no matter what you're doing you're continually like effed over by him this is a man who knows his character <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know it's it's gonna be yeah, it's all like teamwork this and that but really all it's about is like hey make sure that you know I, I stay alive just be perfect <laughs> All right. Well, unfortunately, we've reached our time. This went by way too fast. It's been so much fun getting to hang out with you guys virtually, of course. So before we wrap this up, do you guys have any final thoughts or maybe any upcoming uh, projects that you are able to tell us about at the moment? Miles? Uh, No, not really. I think um, just, you know, yeah, stay positive. It was fun getting to talk about, like, stuff that we've been working on during quarantine times. But also, like, don't feel bad if you're not doing anything because it's good to remember that we are collectively going through a global season of trauma. And uh, sometimes just getting up is, like, the greatest victory of all. So hang in there. You're going to be fine. For real. real. (laughs) Samantha? Um... Yeah, I'm going to say ditto to the same thing that Miles said. Um, It's very true. And also, um, you can go on my Instagram and start watching some short films. I don't know. Because I just want the views. Uh, No, but um, but (laughs) I'm going to start putting up a little bit more of the stuff I've done before after I clean up a few more of the um, editing since I've learned how to edit um, the past couple years so i'm just going to kind of delve into that and post some more stuff just out of vain and uh um because i don't get to audition and do anything like that right now which is fine um it's all part of it but my instagram it's samantha underscore ireland not this other bs i have as my twitter um but anyway okay samantha underscore ireland perfect (laughs) shannon um, yeah, so um, uh, a buddy of mine uh, have started a new entertainment company called 819 Entertainment. Those are the numbers 819. And our first project is um, we commissioned um, a tabletop role-playing game uh, custom for us. And we are going to start streaming it on uh, the first screen uh, will be on uh, uh, Labor Day. Monday, the 7th of September, uh, 7 p.m. Jen Brown is part of the party along with me. Jen is uh, playing a character um, who is unlike any character you've seen in her play. And I <laughs> love that character. Um, I play kind of a uh, edgeward, kind of douchey 17 year old. Um, <laughs> apocalyptic show um but jen's character i don't want to say too much because uh, jen's character is fantastic and um uh yeah so go check it out um we're on twitch 819 entertainment um and we're on twitter um so if you look for us you can find out more details and we haven't announced the name of the show yet but it's coming up next week very cool all right wonderful yeah, yeah. What about you, Nate? look forward to volume eight I think many of you will like it. It will. You, many of you will experience a roller coaster of emotions. So uh, Miles and Carrie and Eddie Rivas, they did a really good job of writing it. So uh, almost there. <laughs> Amazing. And yeah. Jen? Uh, well, uh, as I said, I've been working on a television show. Uh, my production company is officially uh, a thing. So brownrecluseproductions.com. And we're also uh, Brown Recluse LLC on Twitter and been, you know, posting small updates of what I'm allowed to say. But the pilot was just finished. Our rough pilot was today. And within the next month or two, our network will give us the, 
the thumbs up and they'll start advertising and announcing it, but I can't say anything until they do that. But very good. Mm -hmm. If you want to be the first person to find out about my television project, um, be sure to follow Brown Recluse. Uh, LLC on Twitter, um, and then Brown Recluse Productions on Instagram. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you guys so much. This has been so much fun. And I just want to remind everybody once again to go to galaxycon.com to purchase these group chats and one-on-ones and autographs. And also make sure to check out the event tomorrow with the Klingons from Star Trek. And next week we have Rock Around the Ring, Galaxy Con Talks Comics. We have events with Achievement Hunter, Once Upon a Time, and My Hero Academia. And so from all of us here at Galaxy Con, and thank you guys so much again. This was such a blast. And I hope to see you guys real soon and uh yeah have a wonderful night everybody we'll see you guys real soon bye bye, bye. Thank fun. You, bye. love you all bye.